my family on my dad's side is Jewish mafia. So it makes sense if someone wrongs me, even if it's family, I teach them a lesson. At age 12, I testified in court to put daddy in jail. See, I love my daddy so much, but I was livid. He gave up his parental rights to, to me because he'd rather be selling cocaine than being my occasional parent. Angry, I called the DEA and said daddy was dealing coke and he needed to be punished. I skipped school and I took the bus down to the courthouse. Playing on my Walkman was someone saved my life tonight. Daddy and I used to sing it together at the top of our lungs. Tears streamed down my face. Daddy wouldn't save me anymore. He abandoned me. I was heartbroken. I, I, I tried to hide my pain from my, my mom and stepdad. They, they warned me that he'd only hurt me. But every little girl wants her daddy's love. See, daddy was rich and mom and my stepdad struggled. With him gone, so went the child support. I started taking care of myself. I got my first job at age 12 and I kept working. I had three jobs in college. I was a hustler. I always found a way to make money. It was then when I came up with my three rules of life. Number one, you don't ask, you don't get. Number two, never take no for an answer. And number three, fuck fear. But 10 years later, at age 22, I got tired of being tough. I was lonely. It was my own fault. I scared guys away my own age. I didn't want them to get close and, and see the scared little girl in me. So I started dating guys twice my age. Daddy issues? Hell yeah. I was the poster child. I was 22. He was 20. 44. I loved how he spoiled me. Exotic trips, Tiffany boxes, fancy parties. It felt so good. But the little girl in me still felt unlovable. If my daddy didn't want me, who would? If I ever was to get married, I knew I had to face my darkest fear. Confront my father, forgive him, and pray that he would love me. It was the morning of Father's Day. We hadn't talked in 10 years. I anxiously paced my loft, building the courage to call him. I imagined the worst. He'd scream at me, tell me I ruined his life, curse me the way my mother always cursed him. That would, that would kill me. But not calling would kill me too. I, I, I needed a sign to get unstuck. I turned on the radio. Someone save, someone save, someone save my life tonight. <sighs> Our favorite song, there is my sign. <sighs> Terrified, I called and I wished him happy Father's Day. I held my breath. Daddy cried. He told me he was eight years sober. He went to Narcotics Anonymous meetings six days a week. He graciously embraced me back in his life. Daddy instantly became my rock, my protector, the man that would always be there to fix anything. He literally was my one phone call. He'd say, if anyone fucks with you, one phone call. <laughs> For the first time as an adult, I enjoyed feeling loved and protected. I was still capable, but there was a new sweetness and vulnerability about me. Two years later, I found my husband. He stepped in as the protector and replaced my father's role. But 18 years and three amazing sons later, my marriage and family fell apart. When I called daddy to tell him, he answered, so you want me to have him whacked? This time, Daddy was the hero to swoop in and save my life. I was, I was too ashamed to tell anyone the nastiness I was going through. I told him everything. He listened. He paid the legal bills. He got me through the worst time of my life. 
and he always made me laugh. He encouraged me to get out there. So every time I'd call, he'd answer, you getting any? <laughs> Even with daddy's love and divorce advice, he'd already been divorced three times, my protective shell was shattered. I had lost everything. My husband, my family, my home, my community. I was ashamed of, of how my life had fallen apart. Then, barely 18 months later, when I was still picking up the pieces, calling daddy every day, he suddenly died. I lost my rock. I, I didn't handle losing daddy well. Instead of mourning my loss, I went into survival mode. I convinced myself the only way to survive and to go it alone, the only way to thrive is to save others. So I embodied, embodied my favorite superhero, Wonder Woman. I put on the red corset, donned a cape, and I was ready to save the world. I bought a 100-year-old five-bedroom house and started rescuing people. My sons were annoyed that there were always strangers staying with us. You broke up with your boyfriend. You lost your job. You're traveling and ran out of money. Come move in with me. Of course, Daddy in heaven saw me spiraling out of control. So to prove, to prove that I don't have to rescue anyone, he sent me a superhero. His name was David, and he literally looked like Thor. <laughs> Thor was ridiculous, in a good way. Six foot four, long blonde hair, green eyes, brilliant, PhD in fusion physics, insanely fit, Jewish, of course, funny, kind, and 14 years younger. Plus, he could fix anything, and my old house was always crumbling. He was what every divorcee wants, a hot handyman. <laughs> Since my divorce, he was the first man I had dated for more than three months. Our relationship broke my promise to myself to fly solo. Every time I felt dependent on him, I would break up and I'd say, I hate how much I need you. Fortunately, my house kept crumbling. So whenever something broke, I'd call him to fix it and he sheepishly, or I sheepishly took him back. When I did this, I always had excuses that made sense to me, but it was obvious to Thor that I was terrified of commitment. He saw the scared little girl in me, and he loved her. I didn't trust him. I didn't trust love. <sighs> Looking down from heaven, Daddy was annoyed. He'd worked so hard to repair my heart, which he'd broken. So, again, to teach me a lesson, that love only exists when you let others love you when you're strong and weak, he sent me back-to-back shitstorms. Shitstorm number one, cold sweat and runs. 7.45 a.m. during a horrible rainstorm, my 17-year-old son Jonas called, Mom, I drove off a cliff! I started sweating, praying that he wouldn't die. I called my ex, no answer. I called Thor, I'm on my way. I arrived to the scene to visual overload, rain, police, ambulances, fire trucks. I saw Jonas's car, mangled, parts sticking out of the ground. And then Jonas emerged from the bushes, stumbling towards me. He looked pale and terrified. Thank God you're okay. I embraced him while he sobbed. We then rushed to the hospital to get him checked out. Waiting there was Thor, calm and stoic. He never left our side for six hours until we were miraculously released. My son drove off a cliff and was fine. I thought, how 
horrible it would have been if I were alone. Even Wonder Woman needs backup once in a while. As soon as we got home, sorry, shitstorm number two, rumbling thunder. As soon as we got home, Thor calmly announced that the downpour had flooded my garage. Shit. Off to Home Depot, a place I always avoided. Thor did his superhero thing, and by that I mean he bought a wet vac and industrial dryers and a sump pump and sandbags, which he filled himself. I sat in the car, guarding his hammer. <laughs> Back home, Thor used his manly tools to save my garage. I was grateful and exhausted. I couldn't wait to relax, but it wasn't over yet. Shit storm number three, full on shit storm. I sat down on the toilet to unload from a shitty day. As soon as I flushed, my toilet gave me a fuck you in the form of sewage shooting from the bowl onto my ass and everywhere. Help! Thor came running in. Now, now. You don't often see this type of heroism in the Marvel Universe. But it turns out that Avengers can handle feces the same as attending to evil aliens hell-bent on conquering our world. Within 40 minutes, Thor stopped the overflow and a plumber arrived, all without breaking a sweat. Shitstorms come in threes, so we're now done, he calmly opined. Maybe I could have handled that day alone, but I didn't have to. Thor saved me that day and many, many other times. But sadly, I attacked him repeatedly until I pushed him away for good. It's been two years and I'm still flying solo. Why? Because my instinct is to sabotage love. I'm not. Wonder Woman. I'm the love saboteur. Not allowing, not allowing someone to love me has been my greatest regret. The only way I can know love is to tell the scared little girl in me, it's time. It's time to take off the costume, grow up, and let someone love me in all my broken beauty. I hope this time she'll listen. Thank you. Audrey Jacobs, everyone. Audrey Jacobs.